All right, guys, welcome back to another Let's Image tutorial where I show you how I used Photoshop to transform this image into that image. All right, welcome back. My name is Philip. You can find me at Twitter at Let's Image. And uh, we're going to start off by removing a couple of people. So as you have probably already guessed, I have just mirrored that image in half here. Okay. So what I will do, I will just take the left half and remove the people. And the best way to do that is by duplicating your background layer. That's at least what I'm always do, uh, doing. So I'm going to hit Command NJ, which will do exactly that. So now we have layer one down here. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit I'm on the space bar, which makes me, um, you know, which enables me to move around. And I'm gonna, uh, then I'm going to go to my, my how's it called? The Spot Heating Brush Tool, I believe. There you go, the Spot Heating Brush Tool. <laughs> Amazing. All right, and we're going to make that a little bit bigger to something like that. And I'm just going to get rid of these guys here. Something like that. I'm not going to take a massive amount of time, just because I don't want to bore you. And we go here, a couple of more people down here. All right, go away. Yes. See, it's doing a good job. If it doesn't really work, just go over it again. Okay, you can live with that. Just like that. Okay, and these people we don't really care about because we're going to mirror it here. Okay, so. Okay, so that's cleaning up at least the people. And I'm quite happy with that. So next we're going to mirror the image. And an easy way to do is by just, uh, is by just grabbing your marquee tool, either by pressing M or by finding the little marquee tool symbol up here. All right. And I'm gonna just drag and drop a well, a rectangular thingy doodly around the left half. And I'm gonna make sure that I have cut the whatever that thing is, pillar, I don't even know, uh, in half. Okay, once I have done that, I can just zoom out again. I'm gonna hit Command and J, and that'll just basically take the selection we have just done and uh, putting it onto a new layer. All right, once we have done that, we can hit Command T which will allow us to basically transform and change the shape and flip and stuff, you know, with this half of that layer. And I'm just going to drag and drop and mirror it basically over here. I could have gone to you know, select and flip horizontally as well, but, you know, whatever. I'm going to hit, com uh, hit Command and, hi and H, which uh, basically hides the lines around my selection, but I'm still able to, to move it. So as you see, if I hold, you know, if I press the, the arrow keys, I can still move it to the left and to the right. So I'm just going to position it in a way that it looks as it would actually be fitting together. And I'm looking especially at the top part here where there is this funny bowl thing. And I'm just going to make sure because you don't want something like that. It looks just kind of crap. Okay. So let's bring that in there. And that doesn't look bad. And now we have mirrored the image. And I know some people probably go like, oh, but that looks kind of weird because you can see it down here. Yes, I'm aware that you can see it, but I kind of like it. And I, I wanted to have that mirrored effect. Uh, why do I want that? Well, if you look here, now you have in the water, you have a bit of, little bit of brightness from the clouds here, and of course you have the clouds themselves, which create this kind of arc here, which continues in the reflection of yeah, the clouds again in the water. And I kind of like that. And So obviously it's mirrored, and I don't even try to hide it, but that doesn't matter to me, I like it. So the next step will be to work on the ground, the water, and the sky separately, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So. Next, we're going to first crop that image in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit C on my keyboard, which brings up my crop tool, and I'm going to just bring that in from the bottom up to somewhere like here, probably. Yeah, that's all right. And also the sky a little bit into something like that. Okay, make it a bit more panoramic. Uh, once we have done that, I'm going to work now on the water first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, where is it here, this brightness contrast some adjustment layer. I'm going to increase contrast all the way to the left, okay? And I'm going to do exactly the same thing again, okay? So up with the contrast, obviously it looks horrible. And then I'm going to go to my hue and saturation, and I'm going to bring down the saturation a bit. And I'm just looking at the water. I do not look at the, the sky or the lands, okay? So just saturation down a bit. And then I'm going to, with the top layer selected, hold shift and click on um, the last one, basically the last adjustment layer here. And I'm going to hit Command and G, which will group these things together. Why do I do that? Well, because I do not want to have that effect visible in the sky and the, the foreground, which is the landscape here. So to yeah, basically get rid of the effect on certain spots, you can just create a layer mask by hitting the little Japanese flag down here and hit Command and I. 
And now everything is hidden until I use my brush tool, which I can get by hitting D, and I start drawing in the image with white. Okay, so make sure white is selected on a black layer mask. And you can see if I just start dragging across, um, you will get whatever is underneath. All right, so let's don't do that here. Let's zoom in as best as we can to something like that. And again, I'm not going to spend a massive amount of time to make a selection now. Uh, I'm just going to do it as quickly as possible. So what I'll do, I'll just, as you see, oh, my Photoshop is doing the funny thing with the black, the black stuff again. I have no idea why it's doing that sometimes. I'm going to have to figure that out. It is disturbing. Disturbing. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm just going to get that water through. If you go a little bit over the landscape, that is not a big issue because you can just hit X. So you're now you're painting black on a black layer mask meaning you're going to hide whatever you have created again, all right? I'm going to hit, hit X again, get my, uh, my white again, and start brushing it in, all right? As I said, I'm not going to do that perfect, but you will get the idea. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Why oh, should I make that here a bit more? Yeah, something like that. Okay. And here, and there, and something like that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side as well. So first take a nice and big brush. And the bigger I make my brush, the more it does that weird thing with the black. So odd. Let's make it small, then it's not happening. All right. Nearly there. As I said, normally you would like to do a better selection than I'm right just doing now. But yeah. Keep it short. All right. There we go. Uh, by the way, I'm using a pressure-sensitive uh, pen right here. So I'm using a pen. That's what I wanted to tell you. So it makes it kind of a easy and nice process just to brush these things in. It's better than with a mouse, I think, at least. Let me know if you think otherwise. Okay, so that, that would be the water for me. I'm quite happy with that. Obviously, you can see I didn't spend too much time and effort on the, the horizon here, but, you know, what ifs. So the next part will be the sky. Okay, so let's do the sky. So with the ground, I just want to do two things. I want to bring some more color into the thing and some more contrast. And what is the easier way to do that? Well, it is, you go to your saturation and you just increase the saturation right there just a notch to something like, uh, maybe that, right? Want to see the before and after always just toggling on and off. I don't even know if you can see it, so, but I can, so I'm quite happy with it, so I will just keep it there. Now, and then I'm going to go to my contrast and brightness and I'm just going to increase the contrast a little bit. To something like, yeah, why not something like that? Now, I'm gonna do the same thing as before with the brightness layer selected. I'm just gonna hold shift click and select the hue saturation layer. I'm gonna hit command in G, which will group them together. And this one is now for the ground. Okay, so what I will do, I will create the layer mask just like before. Hit command in I to invert that layer mask. Get my brush by hitting B, make the brush nice and big to something like, yeah, might as well, something like that. I'm just going to brush in that effect, right? I'm really surprised about that black, um, these black squares which show up on occasion. A bit odd. Okay, in this case I'm going to bring my opacity up to 100%. And I'm just going to drag, uh, brush that in. Simple, nice, easy, and gives a little bit of contrast in there. All right, let's look at it before and after. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Good. Now the last part will be the sky, and probably I will work, or try to sort of, um, the adjustments I make for the sky now, I try to apply them to a little bit of the water as well. So let's see if that works. All right. The sky is easily done. So what I want to do is I want to add some, some contrast, but not with the contrast adjustment layer. So what we're going to do is, first I'm going to do, uh, go to my curves here. Okay, I'm going to hit on curves. I'll, I'll just decrease the brightness of the sky to maybe something like that, something like that. All right. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Levels right here. And we're going to shift that little thingy doodly up there. And what that's doing, it's sort of, why well, you see the clouds are being still being white, whereas the rest of the sky gets a lot darker. All right. So that's what I want, actually. So I'm just going to go to something like that. All right? And what you can see as well is that in the water now, we actually can see the reflection of the clouds a bit better in the water as well. And I kind of like that, right? So... I'm going to do the same thing as always. I'm going to hit, uh, with the first one selected, I'm going to hit uh, Shift, or Hold Shift, and go to Curves. Okay, there you go. I'm going to hit Command and G to group them. I'm going to go to the Japanese flag to do a layer mask. I'm going to hit uh, Command and I to invert that. I'm going to 
do that. I'm going to show you the sequence in the description of the video as well, should that be too fast. Otherwise you can always rewind, because rewinding is a great way of getting back in time. Okay, now I just want it in the sky and a bit of, you know, that's the same effect in the water. So let's drag it in here, and of course we get this kind of weird black squares again. So odd, who knows why that is happening. If you do know, please let me know. Alright, something like that. And then probably to a lesser extent, we're going to do it to the water as well. Zoom in there a bit more. Make that a bit smaller, something like that. And maybe go down with our hardness to something like that. All right. Ooh, it's doing it again. So odd. All right. Again, normally you would like to do a good selection around all these objects. I'm not going to do that now because it's just going to take forever. Or at least a little bit longer. <laughs> Okay, paint it in there. That's not bad. Let's hit X, maybe get rid of it a little bit here. X again. Okay, there. I think I'm actually going to put it into the water. So let's do that. Let's make the brush big. And just going to X and put it in the water as well. You know, what costs the world? I'm going to zoom out to see how that actually looks. I'm not worried about the ground right now. I know I'm making it kind of weird there as well, but I don't even care right now. Okay, that's kind of neat. I'm gonna hit no. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna hit X and bring down more opacity to twenty percent because I don't want the effect quite as strong in the water. So I'm just gonna remove it a little bit, do something like that. Okay, goody. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the on the other side. So the opacity back to 100. You can, by the way, do that as well by hitting 0. It'll do the same thing. So just observe. Oh, now it's 100. 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. I'm just hitting the number keys now. Okay. So 0 is 100%. Ooh, these black squares. All right. I'm going to get it in the water first. Because why not? Okay, oh, we have it in the sky already. Okay. Huh. Good. And now I'm going to take it out of the water a little bit again. Okay, by just going with an opacity of 20%. So I'm hitting 2, press X, and just remove it a bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to hit 0 for 100% opacity and make my brush a little bit smaller. And just if you wanted to, you could clean up these areas now around the, the water, uh, sorry, around the, the land. So the, the ground, the soil, whatever it is, um, if you wanted to. So maybe zoom in a little bit more, otherwise, you don't see anything. All right. That's always like a bit of back and forth kind of game, but you get the idea. Okay. Okay. I can live with that. Good. So now we have kind of a very contrasty image. It's quite colorful, and there are just really two steps left to do. So the first step is I want to add some blur to the sky. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, what I want to do is I want to add some radial blur so that it actually kind of looks that the clouds are moving towards or away, whatever you want from the center. So the way to do that is by doing a stamp visible. So that means that everything we are currently seeing at the image or on the image will be put onto a new layer. Okay. But that means if you do these kind of things that you cannot go back and do changes in the older, let's say, layers you have done before. Okay, so all the adjustments we have done for the water, for the sky, for the ground, they will be done, all right? The moment you do a stamp visible, um, except, of course, you delete that stamp visible and then it's gonna be back, right? So let's do that. So let's hit Command, Alt, Shift, and E. And that is doing exactly that, a stamp visible. And as you can see now here, um, you have the little, you know, new, uh, new, la new layer icon. And if I turn that on and off, you see that nothing happens because it's exactly what we can see right now. So with that selected, I'll go to Filter and to Blur and to Radial Blur. And then you have to play a bit around with that. So I went from Spin, which is I think usually selected, to Zoom. And I chose an amount of about 8 pixels. We can even go to 10, I guess. And uh, just make sure that the center of your blur is in the center of your horizon. If you do something like that, or well, whatever you want to do, obviously. Then you hit OK. It's going to take a sec, 
and there you go, you get kind of this radial, radial blur, so it looks like they are a bit faded out, which I like. Now, again, I don't want that everywhere, so what I will do, I will create a layer mask by hitting the little Japanese symbol down here. I'm going to make my brush nice and big, probably conjuring up the black squares again, but I have to live with that. And I'm just going to drag, uh, sorry, paint through the areas where I do not want to have that effect visible, because now my layer mask is white, okay? I'm going to hide it with black. Uh, black hides the stuff. I'm just going to brush that through. All right, now we have the effect in the sky. Good. The probably last step I want to show you is um, how to make that effect in the water, these reflections a bit more, you know, a bit more defined. And what you can do, what I did at least, I'm just going to go to levels and I'm going to shift that thing basically from the left to the right, okay? So you make your darks uh, darker, but your lights will stay the same kind of. So I'm just going to do that a little bit, so something like, maybe like that. And you can play around with that and obviously it depends on your image as well. But I think I'm going to leave it like right there. Now again, I don't want that everywhere, so I'm going to hit, in this case, just Command and I to invert that effect. And I'm going to brush in where I want it with an opacity of, let's say, 40%. And I'm just going to go over that area right here. Okay. All right. Okay, so it's got that. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Now it's a bit more, you know, a bit more uh, concentrated on the whites there. And now you have this kind of funny arc, which I liked from before. Okay, what I have just shown you in Photoshop are easy techniques you can use to process or edit your images. If you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe, and I shall see you the next time. And don't forget to get out there and take some pictures yourself. Arrivederci!